Hello people, this is another Dose of Drew in a episode of Friday Night Knives that is going to be rapid fire reviews where I try and keep these under three minutes per knife, hit the high points, the low points, something I like, something I don't, and then just roll on to the next one. Tonight we're starting out here with the Kaiser Original. Uh, this is a Mojave Outdoors and Kaiser collaboration. It is a button lock aluminum handled N690 bladed with bearing flipper. I shouldn't even say flipper. It's just a folding knife because there's not really a flipper on there. But it is the plunge lock or button lock. It is well done. Um, the size there, not going to change these around too much. Except I will give you a little bit of a uh, quick peek on how this fares to some of the other small ones. There's the Rat 2. Right, there we go, and not just any leak, but a random leak. All right, so you can see where that's at. You get, you get a pretty good deal for the money. Uh, this is a very competitive area, but you can get a really good button lock with a really nice uh, action. N690 blade steel is a very good blade steel. It's got good edge retention, good toughness, and pretty decent corrosion resistance for the price. Good little knife. Uh, honestly, the only real complaint I have, and it's not really even a complaint, the only thing I say is that it's, it's bland. In the good sense, in that it's a very classic design, there's nothing that comes out. It works for, uh, you know, the thumb studs and the sharpening shoyo work with the design to give you a place to pinch, gives you a place to, to choke up. You can come back with a little bit of a bigger hands. We'll find this a three finger where you're supporting it with your pinky. Give it a little, you know, like boost with well, on the booty there. But uh, for my hand, I can I can get right in there and still have still have a little bit of just only a little bit of finger hanging off. Which really good in the pinch grip. Pretty good little knife. Oh, and that is moving on to the next one here. And this is the Mike Vagino. Vagnino? Vagino, something like that. I probably messed that last one up on purpose. But uh, yeah, Vagnino, Vagnino. I don't know how to do the Italian. Anyway, Kaiser, zip slip, slip joint with a different little mechanism that's really cool. This is a special edition in CPM 4V. It does have about 40, 60% or 40%, whichever one you want to look at it. Stop on there. Walk talk is okay. Um, it's not the snappiest I've ever felt, but it is nice. And uh, you, you do have your finger up your ear on the choil. And for anyone who knows, I want to show you this. This is what I I can put my finger in there. And. Ooh. I'm not going to worry about getting pinched. I can put my finger in there and it just pushes it out of the way. That won't push your thumb, finger, anything like that. Your skin's not going to get caught in the little joint there. Nice little thing, zip slip, back spring doesn't move up, so it works really good. It's a little bit loose, if you ask me, on the spring tension. Um, I do like, a, if I'm going to be using a slip joint, I do like the walk and talk to be a little bit heavier. Um, but the contoured handles, the decent uh, pocket clip, which really works best for something like slacks. It's, it's thinner material. Uh, it's very not very thick if you're putting it over, like, car hearts or any other solid jeans right there like uh it's fairly thin little pocket clip but it does have a good shape it is recessed it is linen micarta it is contoured it is very comfortable in the hand and if you look real close here you'll notice the actual hand space on this thing is um uh, really close to the pair of three lightweight which has a fair amount of hand space for most hands. So does the zip slip. Good little slip joint. Innovative little mechanism. Especially the 4V version especially makes a great daily carry. It, uh, it's a nice look. But all of them are good knives. All right. Uh, next bit here. We're going to do a, a sort of a special edition. I still have a few from at the time of this recording. Um, this is the Honey Badger Tan Medium Tanto. This is a special edition that they have out in D2. 
that is the medium. I, for those who watch this channel, you guys may remember, I have done a review previously on the Warren Cleaver version, which I still have. It is my own personal version. One, I very much, I very much like this blade shape for both its utility and that by tilting that little hand, they give the, it actually gives the knife quite a bit of character. One that's really uh, hard to mistake for anything else. And the Choil version, which they have Choil and non-Choil versions now, um, is really my favorite for its versatility. The Tanto version here gives up a little bit on the Choil versatility for just rugged toughness. Going to be able to do a whole lot of cool stuff. It's a good EDC. I find a little bit of the handle comfort is lost without the Choil, but not a lot. Um, reverse grip is always good. It's a flipper. The thumb hole, the action, uh, the honey badger actions are great. They're on bearings. They're, they're, uh, sunken liners. This G10 here with the natural JG10, uh, very fantastic. Very, very robust tip geometry you can see right there with the, uh, the bit, especially for D2 steel. This sucker will open a tin can of soup and have no problem as long as you wipe it off so the soup don't cause corrosion because it's not uh, corrosion resistant. All right, moving on to another company um, uh, or multiple reviews here where I'm going to kind of talk about a couple and generally the, and actually the company in general because I do have a couple here if you want to see where there is, uh, I do have, Several of the Reich, Reek? It's not Reich. It's Reich. There's Reich and there's Reich. <laughs> Apparently, this is also Reich, but this is Reek. This is how I'm going to say it because the other one actually doesn't have you, it just has an I. As you can see, there's several different uh, bits here. There, there is, it's, it's a strange. These are all relatively cheap, you guys. These are. Uh, they have 8CR13. I don't have any of those knives. All of these knives on the table here are 14C28N. They do that almost exclusively. They basically have just one or two blade steels, very similar to the Honey Badger. They're really, really well constructed, and they uh, uh, th they have a good budget line that are very unique and and very useful. Good EDC. Uh, much, much like this, the, uh, very, the G10 on this is just a pentagonal. Let me see if I can get that up. It's just pentagonal. It's not actually contoured, but the pentagonal part makes it behave as if it's contoured, especially in a knife that is so slender where you need to have the modified pinch grip on it more so than that. With that Warren Cliff uh, shape, reverse tonto, whatever you want to call it, very good knife, single-sided thumbstead. 14C28N literally takes a razor sharp edge. You can get um, straight razors out of it. It's very corrosion resistant, very tough. It takes a wicked edge. This one is stainless steel in 14C28N. It is a nice drop point. This is one of the more famous ones. I believe this is the 801SB. They have the black and they have the silver versions of this. They're both stainless, the 420 stainless steel frame lock with a 14C 28 end blade. These these things are like 40 or less than 40 bucks. These are like 28 to, to 40 bucks, depending upon which model or something. They're much like the Honey Badgers. They're extraordinarily good well built well thought out budget knives they they don't do a lot of different steels they don't do a lot of fancy handles and stuff they actually just concentrate doing a couple of things and just doing it really well and they succeed they do really good work and they're really high quality knives that have great action good materials and they're heat treated well their edges are great the the functionality is all there they hit all the right buttons with high quality they're they're in by using the same steel, they're able to really focus on quality. They, they use the same steel. They don't have to change their heat treat procedures. They can essentially have one machining line that does a really good job. And pretty much, I have yet to find an example from the brand that doesn't live up to that quality. So I'll definitely add that in. Couple more, couple more here. This is part of the reason for the rapid fire reviews. Manganas Grazioso. 
uh, the titanium and carbon fiber frame lock or bolster lock version of the N690, went the new, the high-end version came out, you guys. It is over half an ounce lighter. Um, different with the matte texture, no texturing on the carbon fiber. It is just the the finish of the carbon fiber, much like my card, the finish of the carbon fiber itself is the grip, as opposed to the texturing on the G10 that you see, right? Instead of it going smooth. Um, every bit as good as the uh, original one there, and in some ways better CPM. 20 cv on that uh the recurve is fantastic the ergonomics are great the aesthetics are beautiful this 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 is a good knife and uh in titanium and shredded carbon fiber Ooh, and it's lighter than the other one this one this one can actually i can actually carry in my uh this one i can actually carry in my athletic shorts and it doesn't do that. Or my hiking shorts. The athletic shorts are a little bit, little bit floppy, but like a, a hiking short or something like that, that's got a little bit more structure to it than, than, than that. Uh, this works just fine. Doesn't doesn't overweigh it and make one side like overly floppy or pull down. It's just the right amount of weight. Can't uh, if you've seen my review on the other one. This is everything it is and more. The bolster lock, the bolster configuration on the frame lock means I never have to worry about where my finger is. The action is fantastic. Kaiser really knocked it out of the park. It is on ceramic bearings with the uh, frame lock and 20 CV steel. Hard to go wrong with that. Oh boy. All right, couple more, couple more. Uh, we'll go with the, I'll get this one out so that I can have the pair of three. And I'll go ahead and put the random leak out here as this is going to be slightly smaller a couple of small ones first up is the yorkie in the in the flipper tabless version but the thumb stud version uh great addition to the yorkie family never had a problem with the flipper tab because you can still get a decent pinch grip um this is obviously not a hard use knife um, this is my other other one with the flipper, so you can see there's really not a whole lot of difference in there except a pretty big cutout for the thumb stud and no flipper tab, right? Does give you more placement air, more placement options for your hand, allows you to get up there and really pinch in. And if you're a fan of the Yorkie already, this is an M390 blade steel. Um, this comes in red and silver uh, as well. This is the Ivory G10, um, and it's smooth too, so it slides in and out of the pocket real nice with the black hardware. And for those of you who don't know, let's see if I still have it sitting around on the desk up here. I may have actually cleaned in between. Surprise, surprise. Oh, no, I'm not that cool. I didn't clean in between. They uh, send a spare set of hardware with every knife now that I've got. Not only this one, but the next knife coming uh, up, the next knife that I got coming up here. By the way, this is great, highly recommend it. It's worth the price. It's everything Yorkie was, but it gives you the, a, a lot more options for your fingers without the flipper tab. Uh, the thumb stud is not in the way of the cutting path and anything you're doing, you're gonna be pretty much following that plunge line. So you can do it, and and the action is still great. It still keeps your fingers out. It's uh, I'm a huge fan of the Yorkies in general, and uh, I I could not wait to get uh, on the on the flipperless version. Well, well worth it. A great little knife. This makes my third Yorkie and my third version of it. So, yeah, can't speak more volumes than spending your own money on it. Next one up is the CPM 10V Mini Sheepdog. They have these in the regular size too, which I did not purchase. I do have the other flipperless version and I do have the, the regular size, the 3.25 inch, or is that 3.1, something like that, 3.3. Anyway, I have the other regular size version of the CPM, or was it 154 CM? Yeah, it's not the CPM, it's 154 CM. Flip this version, fantastic knives. 154 CM, CPM 154, RDL 30, they all take great edges. Fantastic little knives. 
the addition of a CPM 10V version is really flying under the radar. For those of you who do not know what that steel it, it is fairly equivalent to K390. Uh, K390 has approximately 9% vanadium. CPM 10V has like 9.7. So it rounds up to 10, hence the 10V. It's just approximately 10% vanadium in that sucker. So you're talking the K390 levels or edge retention or thereabouts. It is a tool it, with toughness that's approaching, uh, you know, stuff like S35VN, right? Like you're getting way better. You're getting the edge retention of S90V, which again, 9% vanadium on that one. So S90V with a lot of chromium gives you, gives you quite a bit of edge retention. You don't quite get the S90V edge retention because it doesn't have all that chromium for the chromium carbides. But man, you get a lot more toughness than the S90V. So you get really close to S90V, K390 sort of um, edge retention um, with toughness similar. It's a tool steel and it's coated so you don't have to worry about the corrosion that can happen with those kind of tool steels. Ton of edge retention and they're under a hundred bucks. Um, biggest thing I can tell you on the difference right here is, is I can show you is if you look at the if you look at the backs and stuff when they're open you can see there's a lot more contouring on the standard 154 cm you can see the you know the lines there's a lot of contouring that really makes this comfortable the cpm 10v version is basically hardly contoured at all like you can see the tiniest little bit of edges and his it was like oh, okay maybe it's rounded so that's one of the biggest things. And uh, yeah, I gushed over the 10V and it being that cheap, but it's sort of flying under the radar. Nobody's screaming about it. But uh, there it is, man. The little mini sheet dog. This, this thing's going to have an edge on it forever. You can cut through something like half a mile of cardboard or something before this thing won't even cut paper. And if, just because it won't cut paper smoothly doesn't mean you can't hack some boxes. You can get quite a bit of edge retention. All right. All right, little random leak, you are out of the picture one more time. We're going to hit a couple of big ones here. First off, Urban EDC Supply Nessie. Ooh, you guys, this one is a hard one for me. Uh, there it is with the pair of three lightweight, right? You can see how it sits in between there. Give you a couple of other, because this one's well worth looking at, right? Like there's the pair of two. Look at that baby. Um, they still have some of these for sale, I do believe. It is a really nice knife, you guys, and this one's a hard one because it's also a big, heavy sucker. I am not usually one to... I, the ergonomics, first of all, I'm going to do it. The ergonomics on this thing are fantastic. The Nesmuk style blade with the big slicer grind really gives you a lot to do. There is so much to like on this knife. The, the titanium is smooth. There isn't a fit and finish problem on here. The biggest thing I can complain about is if you start measuring where the grinds are and where they plunge, you can find that they're off by fractions of a millimeter. Like at the tip, like where, where it crosses over on one side doesn't quite match up with the other. There's little things like that. That's my biggest nitpick on actual fit and finish, right? It's a really, really good knife. And, and M390 blade steel, fantastic. My own personal gripe, and this is not a deal break for everything, but on this particular knife, it makes it hard to carry, is how shallow that pocket clip is. I mean, man, if I have this here, I just wanna, that's what sticks out. Even in jeans, that hits the edge of my hip, and it literally lifts the knife up and starts pushing it out of my pocket. So I don't get to carry this. I can't carry it in anything other than jeans or heavy slacks. And when I do and I sit down, it starts to pop out of my pocket. So I can only carry in something that's like painter pants or carpenter pants or uh, like cargo shorts or, or cargo pants. Something where I can put this somewhere besides my primary pocket. For me, that sucks. For people that normally carry big, heavy knives, like I, I don't carry the Rat 2 for the same, or the Rat 1, sorry. Rat 1 for the same reason. I... I, I much like on how I did on my rat too, I would I need a aftermarket pocket clip because that's just too too shallow. All right. Uh, by the way, MXG makes really great pocket clips for rat too. Um. 
So yeah, really good, really good knife. I actually can't say enough good. Thing. I can use this knife. Like, I gotta tell you guys, if a box comes and I can find an excuse, this knife actually oftentimes, since I'm not carrying it, it doesn't go into my knife box. It actually sits out here as the knife that if I don't have a knife that I'm reviewing or trying to check out, this is honestly the knife that I go to grab to either open up a box or if I have to take more often than not, if I'm not doing a review, this is what I take to go down and actually break down some boxes for the recycling bins. Because it does a great job even with the thick steel, that slicer grain just really does a, uh, you can score stuff. It's fantastic for doing that sort of stuff. Can't say enough good things about it. I just wish that my own personal style, size, and everything else allowed me to carry this knife more because I don't want to let go of it. It's a fantastic knife. I have zero buyer's remorse about it. I just wish I could carry it more. I didn't realize it would be that shallow of a pocket clip for a one screw. It uh, could have given me at least a quarter inch on there. They did chamfer the hole, the lanyard hole both sides so it's definitely got some potential for a lanyard opening there um and if i were to do a lanyard on this knife this is one of these knives where if i were to do a lanyard i would peel off that i hate to peel off the pocket clip because it gives you a place to put your hand while you flip on a frame lock anyway torn love that knife but torn another quick one giant mouse ace grand oh my god this one is the uh saint nick's knives vanitas 4e version if you don't know saint nick's knives they're a great little outfit they have their own little thing where they do this red and black uh livery on a lot of spider coats and everything. always in cpm 4v um and they did a change up with the giant mouse here in the ace grand and uh, Giant Mouse is a European company, and then they did, instead of doing the American 4V, they did it in the European Vanitas 4E. Basically, the uh, Booter, uh, Booter, Bowler, Bowler, anyway, the Austrian company's equivalent of CPM 4V. Or the one that was 4V, 4V is the equivalent too. It is not a flipper, it is the opening hole only, and my gosh... I am not a fan of big heavy knives, but my goodness, look at this sucker, man. That is a big beefy boy. It's got a blade that is shorter than three and a half inches by quite a bit. Tall as a spider co. It's got contoured handles. The deep carry pocket clip that is one of the better designs out there, including spider co that uh, did the rest. In fact, I'll give you a quick, uh, just to give anyone an idea of, of where we're looking at as far as size here. Here is the pair of two next to it as well. So it is essentially shorter than both of these. Similar cutting edge length um, and, and everything else to both of these. While being in a shorter, taller package, um, nearly the same Grind height as Spider Coast, full flat grind, compact, no flipper tab or anything sticking out. While it's still big and heavy, this is a super solid knife. And with the nested liners, they are indeed, you know, milled out a bit. But uh, oh man, this is, you can choke up. Yeah. Ace Grand. Uh, like I said, I don't usually get the bigger knives. It's not my thing, but I got this one to get the Vanitas 4E steel. And oh my goodness, the, uh, I, I'm a fan of Giant Mouse knives. I have a whole bunch of them. This one was just too big for me. I didn't want to get it in the M390. I got it in the 4V and I am, uh, so glad I did because this is a great knife and a great design. It's, a uh, really hard to beat the the steel is fantastic the action is great the ergonomics are there um even for a big knife it's just a little heavy for me to carry in anything but jeans which i don't get to wear too much oh boy and another quick one sage five 
Oh, Sage Five, how we'll put you in with the rest of your family members here for this little bit. And then we will look at some more. The Sage Five is a fantastic little knife. It's a little bit heavier than the Para 3 lightweight. This is the Sage 5 lightweight while still being um, a little bit lighter than the regular Para 3. And similar in size. There's a couple of things. One, uh, thinner blade stock than the Para 3 lightweight or Para 3. Right? Thinner blade stock. You, both of them have the deep carry clip. They have the uh, GFRN handles. They, the clip's hitting the right spot. They have the compression lock. They have a forward choil, leaf-shaped blades. One's got the drop point. One's got more of the actual like spear or leaf point style. S thumb hole sizes are approximately the same with the uh, Sage being just slightly less. There, there's the right camera angle. Um, more contouring on the Para 3 Lightweight gives it a little comfort uh, benefit to me. Um, the fully nested and milled out liners while maintaining a profile at least as slim as the Para 3 Lightweight um, gives you thinner blade stock at least the same height in blade, approximately the same height in blade grind. So you're getting the same geometry, uh, you know, the same cutting geometry with a thinner blade stock. Better sliciness is what that translates to. And the S30D, I have Spider, the Spider 27 version, but the Para 3 Lightweight, that this is a $140, $150 version, the Para 3 Lightweight that you get for the 100-something bucks, 109 or 100 right now, is a BD1N. This is a, this used to be 122 now it's a $140 um, Spider Co. as well. But here's, here's, here's what it tells me. I love the Sage 5 Blade. I wish the handles were contoured. This Sage 5 blade is just fantastic. The sliciness of it, the thin grind, the, the way that the handles, you know, it, it really takes a lot of what the Para 3 is, is Para 3 Lightweight is to me. In this it's a little heavy, but I can, I can get by it. I definitely like it. And man, what it really makes me want is a Para 3 Lightweight with S30V. I wish they had this thinner blade stock, but a pair of three lightweight and S30V is now something I really, really, really hope they make at a relatively low price point and get, because it's a great steal. It's one of my favorites, and it's currently uh, not, you know, it's currently not in favor with all the other stuff out there, but it's got, it'll have even better edge, well, not having the toughness or corrosion resistance, it'll have better edge retention than Magnica, generally speaking. All right. And you know, I think that, oh no, 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 one more. And this one's just, this is my own personal from a Blade Show Monterey Bay Knives Sea Otter. But since I'm not going to do a full review and I'm gonna do one of these quick reviews, and I'll even take the uh, big knives out here so we can get an idea of sort of, it's it's a really nice one. Do the pair of three and keep it up there. There's the uh, R2-D2, right? Similar blades, got a really nice style to it. And then of course, as always, oops, oopsie. Not just any leak, but a random leak. And there you are, see how that wor that works pretty good, right? Not bad, not bad at all. Stuff def definitely a good size. Um, and here's, here, here's the thing, this one's not a cheap knife, you guys. This is obviously one of the ones that was made specifically for blade show it's got all of the Cerak it's got the black hardware along with the uh, anodized titanium m390 with just the mbk logo you can get the sea otters this monterey bay nice ray laconico um the sea otter is what i believe this one is it is the smaller it's a nice nice design anyone who is not familiar with ray laconico there's, I, I, I'm not going to run and get, I have at least two of his designs sitting right here alongside of it. Let's see if I can find another one real quick, if I happen to. 
Um, I'm a huge fan of his designs. He is a great knife designer and knife maker. They're very classic. Uh, I like things about his designs that I find about most of them is that you can turn them like this and you can see the lines really good. Very smooth classic lines that work ergonomically. And this is, I found this to be easily four fingers for me, but right on the edge, someone with bigger hands might find it to be slightly less so if I'm choking back for the thumb. But if I'm up in a pinch grip, which this really excels at for this kind of knife, I can, I have just enough right here that I can get a finger for some up close. Again, this is not something I'm gonna be trying to hack branches down with, right? In fact, I don't have any pocket knives that I'll be trying to do that with. Um, but it's got everything you need to try and do, like most tests, you need to shave something, you need to cut something. I am not gonna be taking this knife and trying to like cut like shingles. I'm not taking this knife and cutting open bags of marble or sand. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not, this is not what that knife, this is one that I, strangely enough, would be a dress up knife. <laughs> Even though it kind of looks like one of those cheap plastic stick on gas station knives when it comes, you know, really those try and emulate this look, right? They try and make it look like this cool stuff. So if you've only seen the gas station knives, now you know what they're trying to emulate. It's actual anodized and polished titanium. For those of you who don't know, that is an polished and anodized titanium. Pretty freaking cool. So one of the last ones, that is a Ray Laconico. You can kind of see some of his uh, design language there. Abs if you want to take a look, Monterey Bay Knives, uh, another quick one here that I can just gush over. Artisan Cutler Centauri is another Ray Laconico design. Oh, is it good? Um, I'll come back to that one in another another review. I have a couple other knives that I'm going to be doing reviews on. But that has been the Rapid Fire Reviews in Friday Night Knives Edition, you guys. I am said drew and let me see if i can drop these all on here again boom we went through that one right uh here's what we looked over here's what we looked over we got this we got this this is all the knives we looked at tonight to and had a quick conversation about everybody so let's take a look at what we can get here i'm gonna need to make more room i think Everything that was uh, looked at, discussed, new, and wow, well, can I even get them all in? Uh, ooh, baby. There we go. Everything to look at tonight that I reviewed. There you go. The, tonight has been our Friday Night Knives where we went over these. Oh, nine knives, you guys. So there you go. There is your Friday Night Knives. This has been your dose of Drew. I am said Drew. So you guys go ahead and watch the go ahead and watch this twice. Comment as much as you like. Be mindful of side effects and remember to like and subscribe and you guys have a great rest of your night.